Good evening. Chairman Creefall, members of the county board, Sheriff Schulteis, District Attorney Benson, Register of Deeds Martin, Clerk Reichert, Clerk of Courts Russell, Treasurer Merton, members of the cabinet, and citizens of Washington County. Thank you for the opportunity to present my first budget address as your county executive. Throughout the budget process, we have engaged leaders of this board and this organization to ensure the priorities of this body were included in our budget. The entire team, from committee chairs, to constitutional officers, to cabinet members, to managers and others worked on this budget to ensure that for the first time since 1999, it is truly a balanced budget without using our savings account. I need to thank our budget team, Dave Barber, Margie Hammers, Brad Steckert, Dave Owens, and Kathy Wild for all of their hard work, as well, of all, as, well as all of our teammates that made this budget possible. We set aggressive targets for the departments in this budget. Our team of departments hit them and exceeded our expectations, which allowed for this balanced budget. When I ran for county executive, I pledged to focus on the people, live within our means, encourage economic growth, ensure our rural communities thrive, and maintain the best quality of life in the state of Wisconsin. When I announced as a candidate, I pledged to stop using our fund balance, our savings account, to balance the budget. Today, I'm introducing a budget that keeps my promises. Focus on the people. This budget funds a county newsletter, and by 2021, the county will have a new website and regular listening sessions with county elected officials. Live within our means. This budget does, does not borrow or use our savings account for the first time in two decades. Encourage economic growth. This budget invests in M7, a regional economic development organization, and continues to double down on the work you just heard about by EDWC and our revolving loan fund. Thriving rural communities. This budget continues to fund our 2050 transportation plan and reforms the land use division. Maintain the best quality of life in the state of Wisconsin. This budget significantly increases funds to the sheriff's office and invests in the park system without using any tax levy. Throughout my time as administrator, I partnered with this board to set the table for the 2021 budget. We have a conservative budget which we can all be proud of. Washington County will remain one of the few governments in the state of Wisconsin without any financing of the debt levy. There is no new borrowing in this budget. Most local governments raise taxes to borrow. All of our debt obligations are funded through the normal operational levy. While this could change with the future of the Samaritan campus, we are positioned to seek public support for that borrowing. Other local governments use borrowing for short-term short capital, regular maintenance, or operations. Borrowing for the sake of borrowing or balancing budgets is simply reckless. Any future borrowing for Washington County must have the support of our citizens and must be for major new construction or major new construction or reconstruction capital projects. Most citizens in Washington County would not build a new house with cash. Thus, if we invest in a new senior living home, borrowing is prudent. Most citizens in Washington County don't borrow to do regular plan maintenance on their homes. Therefore, neither will we. This budget lowers the tax rate to $2.24 per thousand of equalized value which is 62 cents lower than when I came to the county seven years ago. That's a 22% decrease in just seven years. This is largely possible due to the expansive growth in the county, which you just heard about. Washington County's net new construction was 2% in 2019. That's the highest, by the way, since uh, the property tax levy limits that we are currently familiar with since 2011. Wisconsin local governments may grow the levy at a rate not to exceed net new construction. 
For Washington County, this was $682,000. This represents one of our largest increases in net new construction, demonstrating the effectiveness our invest of our investment in economic development and EDWC. Admittedly, this budget will raise the tax levy. Some might attack us for growing government and raising taxes in this budget. However, consistent with our priorities, I am requesting we invest nearly every dollar of levy growth into the sheriff's office. While local governments across our nation are recklessly executing defund the police policies, I am asking you to increase our commitment. Nearly every new levy dollar, 93%, is invested to fund our law enforcement to maintain the best quality of life in Washington County. We have more work to do to make smart reforms and investments in our sheriff's office. In the coming months, I hope to roll out a policy proposal with the sheriff. As county executive, I will defend the police. Now, you need to approve the resources they need to keep our community safe. To illustrate our commi commitment to ensuring a safe and secure community, let our actions speak for themselves. When I, when I came to the county seven years ago, the levy used for operations was just over $34.8 million. The sheriff's share of the levy was $15.2 million. In that first budget in 2015, through debt reduction and efficiencies, I cut the total levy by $1 million, while at the same time giving the sheriff an additional $1 million. Today, our total operating levy is just over $36.9 million. Meanwhile, the sheriff's portion of the levy is nearly $19.3 million, or 26.9%. Dollar for dollar, the sheriff's levy has grown nearly double the operation levy. I am proud to invest in our deputies and in our sheriff's department and our highest priority of a safe and secure community. As you can see, while other municipalities use government math, raid their savings accounts, or creative borrowing to continue to be all things to all people, in Washington County, we set a clear vision, mission, values, and priorities, and we fund those priorities. One of the innovative ways we achieve this is through our Parks Fiscal Sustainability Plan, which aim to get the park system off the property tax levy. This is similar to the approach Governor Walker used for the state parks. Tonight, I am announcing that in 2021, the parks will officially be completely off the levy. That, that is over a $1 million reduction since my first budget nearly seven years ago. Jamie Ludovic and her team have done an outstanding job getting us to this point and reforming the entire Parks and Planning Department. Thank you, Jamie. Not only is the park system off the levy, we are improving the parks, and those who use the parks are paying for the new amenities. In 2020 alone, we've added a dog park and renovated the barn at Sandy Knoll. Some of you were drinking a beer there, I saw you. In 2021, the users will fund an expanded beach at Yar Park and more. In the coming year, I will also make a proposal to keep a campaign promise by pivoting from a parks fiscal sustainability plan to a parks fiscally thriving plan, which will include a variety of strategies and initiatives aimed not only at maintaining the beautiful properties and amenities, but also expanding and improving on them while still independent of property tax levy funding. I am confident the park system will increase the number of users so that in the coming years, we can lower the cost of families and continue improving our amenities. We have heard for years from customers and contractors about the importance of flexibility, speed, understanding, and competence moving at the speed of business for the county's regulatory functions, including the permitting of sanitary, shoreland, floodplain, and wetland and stormwater. This budget begins to answer these calls for reform. 
We are immediately focusing on our thriving rural communities with the merging of three former divisions, land and water conservation, land use, and planning. Along with reforming and deregulating, this restructuring will reorient the division to focus on the people rather than the government rules and regulations. This reform will protect and improve land and water resources, fulfilling our priorities of economic growth and vitality and safe and secure community. We have an outstanding team dedicated to this cause. I am fully confident in them to deliver the best service to our citizens at less taxpayer cost. This budget continues to fund access to basic needs to ensure the best quality of life in the state of Wisconsin for our residents. We will begin our second year of the drug treatment court. Julie Driscoll and her team will continue to implement electronic health records, which will lead to better service for clients and efficiencies for her team. Our team continually looks for collaboration opportunities to improve our quality of life. Recently, Waukesha County Executive Paul Farrell, Waukesha County Board Chairman Paul Decker, Chairman Creefall, and I signed a letter of support for a state grant to continue Elevate's drug abuse prevention program in schools across both counties. For three years, this intergovernmental cooperation, coupled with the nonprofit partnership, has provided drug prevention education to thousands of students. Our public works team, led by Scott Schmidt, continue to keep our facilities clean, even in the midst of COVID-19. Scott's logistics team has provided PPE to businesses, local governments, public safety agencies, and schools across the county. We will continue to fully fund our 2050 transportation plan without begging for new taxes and potentially without further borrowing. In 2021, we will work with the City of West Bend and the Village of Kewaskum to develop their own road plans. This is the first step in inventorying the roads in these municipalities to figure out what it would take to just fix it. And after we're done there, we'll go to other municipalities. In Washington County, we just fixed it two years ago. Now it's time for our staff to help our municipal partners do exactly the same thing. Recently, I asked Dave Barber, our Director of Administration, to create a team of current county employees dedicated to budget, policy, and analytics. In the 2021 budget, we will bring together experts from human resources, finance, and information technology. This team can provide elevated services to other departments with accurate, timely, and objective reporting of information and recommendations and detailed public policy analysis. This new department will develop new initiatives to make government suck just a little bit less. <laughs> good government is good politics, and this is a well-governed and administrated county in action. I remain committed to asking the legislator, le legislature to provide tools to eliminate excess government, improve property tax assessing, and streamline government services. This new team will help ensure we have the information to back up our conservative reform ideas. Finally, the CARES Act undoubtedly helped us to preserve the savings account the county has worked so hard to build by taking on COVID-19 response costs. The money provided by that law is sufficient to respond to the pandemic. Our Joint Health Department is evidence of government cooperation, pooling resources to effectively respond to public health crises. As other local governments look for more revenue in the form of le levy limit flexibility or federal COVID bailouts, Washington County has a truly balanced budget. Thank you to Kirsten Johnson and the entire Washington Ozaki Public Health Department team for their diligent work throughout this pandemic. The net net of this budget is simple. Nearly every dollar of new levy is invested into public safety. Parks is completely off the levy. Land use will be reformed to focus on the people and encourage thriving rural communities. The budget is balanced without raiding our savings account. I am proud of this budget. We are the first county that I know of to release a budget framework post COVID-19. I'm betting you won't find many who simultaneously have no plans to use their savings account in a COVID world and do not increase borrowing. This is a conservative budget 
that funds public safety, does not borrow any new money, and is truly balanced. I now turn the budget over to you, the county board, for committee review and final passage. In my first budget as your county executive, I have kept my campaign promises. This is a budget of which we all can be proud. Thank you.